mind has evolved an emotional system that gives you encouragement to access the confident part of your personality, the confident imprint, whenever you think you have value. And it gives you discouragement from accessing it when you don't. This emotional access issue is something that you still deal with today, even though most of the threats that it was designed to help you avoid no longer exist unless you live in a frat and get your ass kicked because you were being a dick for negging. <laughs> so, look, the name of this emotion, as is commonly applied to girls, is state. All right? That's just straight verbatim from my notes. So, again, we have this system where it says, look, imagine it like this. If you were in a tribe a long time ago, human beings are social creatures. So if you lived in a tribe and you got kicked out of the tribe, you're done. All right? Imagine being dropped off in the middle of the forest right now. Maybe back then you'd have a bit more survival skills, but for the most part, if you get kicked out into the middle of the forest, you're done. Because human beings' two major assets is intelligence, like innovation intelligence, and the other is like social bonding, right? Those are our two major strengths. So if you're going to take away all, the, you know, all your social links out of the equation, you're done. So if you get kicked out of your tribe, does that, like today, whereas that's kind of like really embarrassing and annoying, what happens if you get kicked out of your tribe for the first couple million years of human evolution? Yeah. Death. So, as a result, if somebody puts a knife up in your face, you feel a certain emotion, right? And if you get really, really humiliated, what emotion do you feel? It's a similar type of emotion. I, wouldn't, I would say it's probably not quite as bad, but the point is, it's a similar type of emotion. So these emotions are designed to make you not step up. Say that you've got the alpha male guy who has the harem, right? He's the one who's hooking up with all the girls and getting his genes passed on. And then you start acting more confident, which is the way that the women are going to become attracted to you. If you don't have the value to back that up, there's a really big issue. And so what your mind does is evolve the system to prevent you from doing that, is to make you not do that. Um, there was an evolution documentary hosted by none other than Alec Baldwin that I was watching. And, uh, <laughs> right, it was cool. And, um, they showed a scene where this caveman climbs up into the tree and he shakes out a beehive and throws it on the ground. And he gets stung in the process, but because he's the one who can throw the beehive on, like he has the courage to go up and, get, and pull down the beehive and throw it on the ground and then these like caveman guys can like eat the honey like blah, blah, like while they're getting stung too. <laughs> Come a long way, right? So um, because basically he could do that, he has a status within the tribe. By him offering that value, he secures the status within the tribe. So he's going to be more confident to act in the way that he wants to act, essentially. That's what's going on there. So this is what we call this, we call it state. We also have another word for it that we've adopted. Anyone know what it is? Starts with the N. The Nimbus. Super Cyan, yeah. Nimbus? Yes, it's biblical. It means the shining ball of holy light, which emanates from the great saint. Okay, or something like that. Did I get that right? I'm not too up to date on my biblical stuff. What's the, is that the exact definition? The halo? Yeah, the nimbus. The radiant light. Would nimbus be like when you give yourself permission to be who you really are? Uh-huh, Yes. Exactly. I thought you were like, is Nimbus R.A.S.? I'm like, no. Right? No, yeah. The, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, just joking. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. When you give yourself permission to be who you really are. Great definition. Absolutely great definition. Yeah. So basically, um, with Nimbus, okay, your state, what we say about state, state is a fancy word for confidence. All right? State is a fancy word for confidence, but it's more than that. Okay? Your state is the emotional system which looks at the situation to see whether or not you have value and gives you access to the per part of your personality that works best. So let me give you guys some characteristics of being in state. One, and, you, and, and look, you don't if, if some of these jump out at you, you can write them down, but you don't necessarily need to write them down. Okay? One, a feeling of being complete. Two, a surge of positivity and steadiness and dominance. Do you guys like that word surge? I like that word. Like, it's like when you're really in state, it's like a surge of sort of positivity and dominance and just like funniness a lot of the time. Um, next, a sort of naturalness where everything clicks. <laughs> I love that, man. Everything, when you're in state, everything clicks. All right? Next, 
man, this is huge. A feeling that you are the source of good emotions in the environment. Think about that. Consider that. Whenever you're in state in the environment, you feel like you're the one who's the source of good emotions. Think of all the ramifications of this. When you have the good emotions, you walk up to the girl, is there approach anxiety? No. How can you have approach anxiety? I'm the source of good emotions. A, right? I'm the one offering the value. You're the source of good emotions. Who here has ever really experienced really having a super on night and being in state? Awesome. Would you guys say that feeling like you are the source of good emotions is a defining characteristic of that? Yes. Yes. I love that. And beyond that, it's a feeling of total abundance where nothing could go wrong. That's the other side of the coin, right? A feeling like you're the source of good emotions and a feeling like nothing could go wrong. <laughs> so when you go up to the girl, you're like, you're not thinking, oh, what's going to go wrong? Like, oh, is this girl going to blow me out? That is not entering into your thought processes. It's not entering into the stream of thought because nothing can go wrong. You're coming from a position of total abundance. You know, if, when you're in state, even if someone was rude to you, you wouldn't take it on board as being your own fault. So you're just like, yeah, whatever. There's other people here. Boom. You're coming from total abundance. You're the source of good emotions. You offer the value. All right? That's the key. It's a flow where everything is clicking. How about being out of state? I would describe it like this. It's a feeling of being incomplete. It's a burden of being weighed down, anxious, or antsy. Next keys, it's a sort of unnaturalness where everything is off rhythm and ill-timed. Okay, like your jokes are off rhythm, your jokes are ill-timed. And lastly, and again, the key to being out of state here, absolutely, like, okay? The key to being out of state is that you view other people as a source of good emotions. It's a scarcity-based mindset. Other people are the source of good emotions. That's like you're in the club, and what's the, how can you tell someone's out of state? He's going like this. He's going, he's going like this. Value scanning. Yeah, he's going like that. And he feels alienated from the environment. When you're out of state, you feel alienated from the environment. Like everyone's having fun and you're not, but you know you're supposed to be doing approaches. So you're like, oh, okay, maybe I can, maybe I've got my, it's like this, right? I've got, this is what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're, you're going like this. Hold this, hold this cup. You've got your half full cup, right? Okay, a little less. Okay, let me do a close up. You got your half, like your half full cup, and you're going like this. You're like. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what that's what you're doing, all right? Okay. That's the that's being out of state. All right. So <laughs> Okay, you feel like other people are the source of good emotions. And you're trying to get those good emotions, okay? It's a it's a mindset where other people have the value and you're worried that you might bother them, right? Those are, like, that's, that's the key. It's like, the big distinction, one, you, you have the good emotions, and you don't care, right? The other is, you have no good emotions, and you're self-conscious. You do care, okay? You're self-conscious, you do care. And so, when you're approaching, when you're out of state, you're like, oh man, the moment's not good enough as it is. But if these other people would like me, I could start to feel good. That's the defining characteristic of being out of, of, being out of state. So look, when you're in state, you have full access to the best parts of your personality. That good, that nice imprint, that cool guy personality, okay? I say it like, I'm kind of like the cool guy personality, but that's what it is, right? Like, like it's your cool guy personality. Um, you have access to that. You have access to, you know when they say be yourself? Well, really what it is, if you think about it, is be your best self. 
That's really what it is, right? They're not telling you, be this lame needy guy, right? Be yourself. But they're saying, be your best self. So you basically have access to your best self, to that best side of your personality. Your mind quiets. You're in the moment, and you're totally outside of your head, all right? Your mind quiets down. All this bullshit self-dialogue, it just quiets down. You're in the moment, and you're outside of your head. It's, a, it's the feeling that guys live for, you know? It's the feeling that guys fucking live for. And that's also why, it, you know, going out and being successful with women becomes such an addiction because it can be a gateway or a portal to getting in state. and become this massive addiction because of that. Um, you know, your mind is quiet in the moment and everything that you do just works. What that means is, like, like when you're really in state, like, when, when the nimbus is raging, you could see a girl and you could be like, hey, right? Walk up, pick her up over your shoulder and just start, like, jumping, you know? And that's your opener, right? You know, you can see her, hey, come here. Who are you, right? And that's your opener. And that's it. And that's all that you need. You don't even really need to do anything because the state is handling it, right? Like, when you're really in state, the level of, quote, unquote, game that you have to use is almost non-existent. You could just be like, hey, what's up? But because you're in state... It's like, okay, you know how I could put it to you? If you think of like the imprint of a cool guy, let's say that, uh, let's say that there's a rhythm to his speaking patterns. Let's say, that the, let's say that a woman's unconscious mind can recognize this as being a rhythm, okay, to what like a cool guy's speaking patterns look like. And by the way, it's not, like every guy has a different rhythm to his speaking patterns, but then there's like the sub-level that's like in detect, like you can't, it's not like the, the surface level, it's like the depth of it. And when you're really in state, your rhythm is like this. It's like nice and flush. You know what I'm saying? Right? And then when you're out of state, if anything, it's more like, you know, you're more like, you're trying to hit the rhythm, but it's just, you know, it's not working. That's why when you're in state, your jokes just hit, right? They hit. You say something, hits. Whereas when you're out of state, you're like, you, sh you, you do the joke and you're kind of like, <laughs> like that, and it doesn't hit. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. So the thing is, is like, everything that you do when you're in state just works, all right? Now what about when you walk up to a girl? Nice eye contact. You can spout anything off and girls just think it's awesome. Like, you just say some silly stuff, and girl thinks it's hilarious. And you never feel like you're going to run out of things to say. Your humor hits, and people follow your lead. That is what being in state is, all right? Naturals tend to go in state more often than regular people, and that's what allows them to be natural. How about when you're out of state? <sighs> Sucks. Hate being out of state. It can... You, give, like, you say your funniest jokes, nobody laughs at it, right? You say your best pieces, like you could have like some pickup line that always works, and you're out of state, you walk up with the same sort of confidence. Like, like you're out of state, you walk up, the same eye contact, everything, but you do it, and it just doesn't work, all right? There's just something that's not there, and it's the characteristics that we talked about. So when you're out of state, it doesn't work. So see, what's interesting, of course, is that when you learned the game through pickup lines, and then you start having these really on nights. For any of you that have learned how to meet women through a lot of pickup lines, you don't even necessarily have to become a natural right away. But what I would encourage you to do is when you're having that really on night, and you're like, damn, you're like, the Nimbus is on, right? Say to yourself, you know what? Now that I feel like this, I'm going to stop with any lines right now. And I'm just going to see what happens. Try that, and you'll see what happens. And if you like it, maybe later, you could just stop using the lines altogether. See? So... That's what, I would, that's what I would encourage. That's kind of how I got started on it. Um, now, one thing that I think is important is that whenever you have a new concept, you also understand why it works. Because when you understand the reason why it works, you have more faith in that concept, and, and you can sort of click it into your reality a little bit better. So basically what it comes down to is state subcommunicates value. That's the best way that I could put it to you. When you're in state, people's unconscious mind says, this guy must have value. This guy must be hooked up. This guy must be the shit. 
even beyond that, I'm just continuing, this sort of bleeds into like tomorrow and the next day's lecture, but ultimately people want to be on the receiving end of authentic communication. And when someone is in state, that will tend to communicate that they're coming from a position of abundance. And when they're coming from a position of abundance, they have less need to be inauthentic, less need to bullshit. Because think of it this way. If you've got, you know, I mean, just kind of making a funny comical situation, like a big harem of women and, you know, you know, feeding you grapes while you sit there in a toga or something like that, right? And you've got all the money that you could ever want and all the friends you could ever want. You've got everything. You're just sitting there. If you speak your mind, it's like, yeah, this is, you know, this is what I think, right? It's like, um, you remember Marlon Brando in The Godfather? Oh, yeah. He just kind of says whatever he wants to say. He just says it. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I like, to, I like these orange peels. Oh, look in my mouth. Right? And he just, you know, he'll just do it. <laughs> so, you know, like, you see these movies where there's sort of like a town hall meeting, and they're all like, what do we do with this, like, town problem and then the guy at the back sort of stands up and he's like listen and the whole room's like and they'll turn around and face him and that's because he's speaking authentically right like there's something in almost like the the flow the flow right where it's like it's just coming out so it's like a piercing arrow that's just sort of coming out and people can see that it's authentic so they go snap and their heads just immediately even with all the ruckus their ras goes authentic authentic and it just it just hears it Right? And so to me, I think that when we're in state, and there's, look, there's millions of counterexamples of like people that are in state all the time that are just nasty people. But the point is, I think generally speaking, as a generalization, when you're in state, that's when you access your best self. All right? That's when you're being your best self. And so people are just more inclined to be around that. All right? So on one level, it communicates that you have value. It communicates that you're hooked up. On another level, you're coming more authentic and you're more your best self. By the way, we had a couple questions. So you're saying you should try to always be in state? I'm going to move, I'm going to talk about that issue. So we'll get to that in a second, yeah. And what was your thing? My thing is, like, <clears throat> I understand how state stuff communicates value. Because mm -hmm. people just generally assume, I guess, that if you're happy, you must have something to be happy about. But, yeah. um, which is kind of dumb when you think about it, I guess, because you, know, you get people that like their their football team wins, and they're like, "We did it!" And you're like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, any generalization can count for example, of course. So, what were you saying? Well, doesn't that mess with your head? Because like when you go out, and you're in state, you know you're gonna have a great night. And when mm -hmm. you go out and you're out of state, you're like, "Damn!" I'm gonna get to that. Yeah, what you just said there, I'm gonna get to that. Yep. There could be different levels of state where if you're just in a casual situation, you could be in a casual state, and if you're in a oh, yeah. better situation, you could be in a better state. But yep. it's always, it's never a negative state, though, just always being who you are at whatever level of intensity you need to be. Absolutely, and I absolutely agree with that. And beyond that, Jeffy has a great example where he calls it uh, like the raging brush fire versus like the white hot searing coal. Right? And so on one level, you can kind of like be in state and just be like jumping around and like twirling girls around and stuff like that. And then on another level, you might be able to just walk up to like really, really low key, like A, hey, just really, really low key. And it's like the hot searing flame or um, hot searing coal, right? And, you know, even when you're sitting there, um, something I'll talk about more tomorrow the next day, like you can be sitting with your friends and just sort of like in the moment, just kind of just chill, really relaxed not trying to impose your frame on anybody, nothing like that, but you're just feeling those good emotions in your own body, just very, in a very relaxed way. And then when you speak, it just comes out nice and crisp, you know? So yeah, you know, there's definitely different levels. And then sometimes it can be injected with a high level of enthusiasm, you know, and, and just different levels of it. And ultimately, like we said, any concept that we come up with are just signposts to a specific place. So I've tried to cover the angles, but there's going to be a million like, different examples that we could come up with. Like, absolutely. Um, now look. Basically what, like, like we said, like, from a woman's perspective, it's like, oh, if he's in state, he must be getting sex. I mean, <laughs> right? You know, that's the, you know, the kind of simple way of putting it. Of course, because women, are not, women, are not, women aren't socially conditioned to be like, I want to date a guy that's like, having sex with lots of other women, right? They're not socially conditioned to to think like that, and if you were to say that, she'd say, absolutely not. But at the same time, she doesn't want the guy who could be. You know, she wants the guy that could be. She may not even logically want it, but it's what she responds to. She might say, I hate guys like that. The last five guys I dated were like that, and I hated it, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me know what you respond to. So, all right, so um, 
Look, you're not trying to impress, you're not trying to persuade, you're not trying to conform, because you have no reason to care. All right? So look. The next issue, and this is massive, because if you don't get this, then the bit that I've taught you guys for the last hour is going to do more harm than good to you. All right? So I want to say that if that doesn't hook your attention, I don't know what will. Pay very close attention. All right? If you don't understand this, then your knowledge of state will mess you up more than help you. All right, so let's pause. Really think about this. What do you guys think could be some of the downsides of knowing about state and being aware of it? What could be some of the downsides of that? Indifference. Self-conscious. Self-conscious? Because it's starting to force it. And What's that? Stuck, you, you, you're going you to get addicted. You want to force it and then Try not get it. it. Yeah. Get that all. Yeah. yeah it's trying to force state a good way to be instead. What? Trying to, it's trying to force state a good way to be instead. No, because yeah. you won't get it. And there's an old paradox about it. Paradox. Yeah. The paradox, right? Paradox. Absolutely. These are great answers. Look, the, the concept of state is meant to be liberating, right? When you first find out about it, when, when I first realized it myself, I would take guys out on a boot camp who typically would have pickup line after pickup line after reverse pickup line and backwards pickup line and forward somersaulting backwards flipping pickup line. And I'd say, fuck that. Look, let's just get in state. I get them in state. I'd say, just say whatever you want, even nonsense, even the death boring interview style questions, and it will work. I show them this, they're blown away, liberated. Like they feel like the chains are ripped off. This is when I first started teaching this way. But later they'd contact me and they'd say, what? I mean, this is a couple years back. What would they say? Man, it's like, now that I'm so conscious of state, I'm, I'm paranoid and I don't go into state anymore. Right? See, the problem is, when you know that state matters, you're going to resist it. All right? You will resist, you will, it will create all sorts of problems. So first, first thing in your head is a personal boundary. This is an absolute personal boundary. And that is this. While on one level you can understand that state is liberating, you can understand that state allows you to do what you want, say what you want, and that it works great. On another level, you have to have a personal boundary, which is this. If I'm not in state, I'm just going to go through the motions anyway. I will never monitor whether or not I'm in state. I will just go through my life. All right? You cannot be thinking, oh, am I in state? Am I in state? You can think it for a while. Look, as a, as a newbie, coming to a new, or not even as a newbie, even as an advanced guy, coming to a new level of understanding, of course you're going to check the ranges and, and the boundary lines and things like that, and you're going to goof up. But as like a permanent way of being, once you've reached the ideal level, uh, you're not going to be monitoring this type of thing. You're not like, am I in state? Am I out of state? Nothing like that. All right? So the first level is a personal boundary. You will not resist it.